If every discovery came with a pre-packaged explanation, the world would be a very boring place. We all love a mystery or two, but it can be frustrating when those mysteries can't be solved. A lot of scientists are very familiar with that particular frustration. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at a few mysterious finds that have posed problems for the scientists who studied them. The Moki Marbles take their name from a belief that the Hopi Native Americans who live in Utah, USA have about them. The word Moki translates into English as departed one. They believe that the spirits of the dead return to the world at night, but leave when the sun comes up. As they depart, they leave behind one of these marble-like objects as proof they were here. It's a lovely story, but the truth is likely to be more scientific. The probable cause of the marbles is an ironstone concretion process that began around 25 million years ago, as groundwater flowed through permeable rock and began a chain of chemical reactions. Over time, minerals formed layers around the iron cores of each marble. Over even more time, the external sandstone layers of the marbles were weathered away to expose the polished-looking concretions within. There are millions of them gathered on Native American reservations in the Utah desert, where it's a criminal offense to remove them from the area because of their spiritual connection to the people. Can scientists explain how a 2,500-year-old human brain came to be pickled preserving it in a near-perfect state. Maybe, but maybe not. They have theories, but they are not convinced that they have answers. The brain was found by archaeologists in York, England in 2008. At first, experts thought that the brain was preserved either by smoking it or embalming it, but an analysis of the brain revealed no chemical signs of either process it might be more likely that it's a freak occurrence caused by the fact that the brain was thrown in a pit of thick clay almost immediately after the head was removed from the body. The circumstances of that removal are quite macabre. Based on the condition of the skull the brain was found inside, which shows cut marks and neck vertebra fragments, it's thought that its owner was hanged and then decapitated. The rest of the body isn't in the pit, and that might also be crucial. Gut bacteria has an unpleasant habit of eating its human host after death, but because of the decapitation, the bacteria were unable to reach the brain and consume it. The origins of clava cairns in Inverness, Scotland are mysterious, but it seems that the ancient Scots built three different overlapping graveyards here over the course of about 1,000 years. The oldest of the graveyards was created about 4,000 years ago. Each graveyard is marked by a large circular chamber that contains hidden passageways and, within them, passage graves. The colors of the stones appear to have been important to whoever created the chambers and the many standing stones that surround them, but we're not sure why. Red-colored stones appear exclusively to the southwest of the site whereas whiter stones are only found in the northeast. That separation obviously didn't happen by accident, so it must have had a significance which we can only guess at. Just as mysterious is the hole in the middle of the ring cairn. When viewed from above, it gives the cairn the appearance of a stone donut. This is an unusual feature for monuments of this kind, and so is another of the unexplained mysteries about this ancient site. There's a Chinese lunar rover on the moon at the moment, and it's spotted something unusual on the horizon. The rover, called U-22, sent home images of what appears to be a cube-shaped object standing up from the lunar surface on December 6th. The images were published in newspapers all over the world, with some observers calling the cube the Moon Hut. Whatever the object is, it's inside the Von Karman Crater on the Moon's South Pole, Aitken Basin region. 
Scientists have already tried to downplay the significance of the cube with the suggestion that it's nothing more than a large boulder that only looks like a cube because it's a long way away, and the image provided by U-22 is in low resolution. Despite that, mission controllers in China have decided that it merits further investigation. They've redirected U-22 to go and take a closer look, but we'll be waiting a while for more information. The mysterious moon cube is only about 260 feet away from the rover, but the rover is so slow that it's going to take about two months to get there. Let's come back down to Earth for our next mystery. This is Ruj El Hiri in Golan Heights. The ancient wonder is made up of hundreds of thousands of individual rocks and looks like a maze, but scientists and historians think it might instead have been an enormous star calendar. Despite years of research, nobody has ever been able to determine a date for its construction. The only thing we can say for sure is that it's at least 5,000 years old. There's a cairn right in the center of Rujum El Hiri, and within the cairn there was once a tomb, but it was raided and stripped bare by tomb raiders hundreds of years ago. The cairn is 15 feet tall, with the connected rings around it averaging about 8 feet in height. Historians have been able to prove that Rujum El Hiri could be used to measure the equinoxes, which would be useful to early astrologers. But just because it could be used for that purpose doesn't necessarily mean that it was, or that astronomy was its only purpose. The fact that it's laid out so much like a labyrinth probably isn't accidental. But why someone would create a labyrinth around a tomb is anybody's guess. You'll find mysterious megaliths almost everywhere in the world that people lived thousands of years ago. In Siberia and Mongolia, the most mysterious of all the ancient megaliths are the deer stones. They're so named because of the deer that are carved into their surface. Strangely, most of them appear to be flying. For that reason, they're also known as reindeer stones, and they become especially popular with visitors at Christmas time. There's significant damage to the tops of all the stones, which some archaeologists believe was caused by the removal of objects that were once mounted atop them. The deer decorations only appear on one side of the monuments, and it's always the side that faces east. The significance of this is unknown. The deer aren't the only images on the stones. Many of them also feature other animals, like horses and pigs, and in some cases there are also human figures. As is so often the case with stone monuments, it's difficult to ascertain an age for the deer stones. Most experts guess that they were erected about 3,000 years ago during the Bronze Age, but we have no way of knowing for sure. Scotland's Orkney Islands have been inhabited by humans for thousands of years, and some of its most ancient occupants were responsible for creating the Ring of Brodgar. We don't know who those people were, because we don't know how old the Ring of Brodgar is. It's likely, but not certain, that it was created between 4,000 and 4,500 years ago. Another megalithic site called the Stones of Stennis is situated nearby, and the two sites might be linked. The purpose of the Ring of Brodgar is unknown. Historians say that it probably served a ritual purpose, but historians often say that when they don't have any better ideas. There were once 60 standing stones here, but some have been stolen and others have fallen over, leaving only 27 still standing today. You'd expect a site like this to have been thoroughly investigated by archaeologists, but very few digs have ever been carried out here. That's partially down to the fact they're in such a remote location. One of the stones features a carving of a cross and the name Bjorn, but it's likely that this was added by a bored Viking thousands of years after the stone was placed here. The rock carvings in Tanumsheda, Sweden, haven't always looked like they do today. They're considered to be the most important pre-Viking works of art in the country, 
but many years ago, they were painted red to make it easier for tourists to see them. Most archaeologists consider that to have been an act of vandalism, and the site is now protected by UNESCO so no further damage is done. The art is scattered across a site that contains more than 600 paintings and carvings, some of which are thought of as being among the most complex and sophisticated Bronze Age works of art in the world. It's thought that the oldest of the works was created about 3,800 years ago. Most of the subject matter appears to be records of the daily lives of the people who created them, including hunting, fighting, and fishing. The collection was added to for about 1,800 years. If you follow the trail of paintings along, you'll eventually find your way to two large burial cairns elevated on piles of rocks. The identities of the people who were buried inside them aren't known, but it's fair to assume they were very important to these ancient artists. Newgrange in Meath, Ireland is part tomb and part calendar. There are quite a lot of ancient tombs in and around the Boyne Valley in Ireland, but none quite so elaborate as Newgrange. This archaeological wonder was created more than 4,200 years ago. That makes it older than Stonehenge in England and the Pyramids of Egypt. Newgrange is what's technically known as a passage tomb, but one that was built with astrological intent. On the day of the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year, the rays of the morning sun come straight through the passage and illuminate the central chamber. For that reason, the solstice is the most popular day for tourists to visit the site. In fact, in recent years, it's become so popular that a lottery is held to determine who's allowed to visit Newgrange and who isn't. The 2007 winter solstice event had 28,000 applicants. We'll probably never know who was buried in the tomb, nor the meaning of the many carvings and geometric patterns that are carved into its side. Many of our regular viewers will know that the oldest human-made religious structure in the world is Gobekli Tepe in Turkey. Far fewer people are likely to know the identity of the second oldest religious structure in the world, but we can change that right now by telling you that it's the Jantia Temple Complex in Ixjangra, Malta. Not only is it one of the world's oldest religious buildings, but it's also one of the oldest freestanding stone buildings on the planet. There are dozens of myths and legends about Gantija, including the idea that it was built by giants and then abandoned as the race of giants died off and disappeared from history. We can probably rule that out, but we don't have any solid information about the culture that built it. We do know that they regularly sacrificed animals within these walls, though, because we found piles of animal bones buried in the ground. Historians have speculated that it might have been a focal point for fertility rites, but there isn't a lot of evidence to support that idea. Almost anything could have gone on here, and we'll probably never know the full story. Now we go from a definite religious site to a probable religious site. It's Gunung Kawi Temple Complex in Tampaksiring, Bali. Based on its design, it's likely to have been built as a Hindu monument, but that isn't certain. We're also uncertain of when it was built or who by. Whoever they were, they did a spectacular job. Gunung Kawi is beautiful, and the quality of the stonework is outstanding. The most commonly told tale about their origin is that they were made by order of King Anak Wungsu of the Udayana dynasty who ruled in the early 11th century. He's said to have wanted a special tomb where he could bury his favorite wives. Why so many of his favorite wives died before he did is a mystery. The theory is backed up by an inscription on the northernmost wall of the shrine, which reads, The king made his temple here. There are ten shrines here in total, all of which were carved by hand and stand about 20 feet tall. Analysis of the stones have revealed that some of them were softened via a chemical process to make them soft enough to carve, but the method by which this was achieved is a secret lost to time. 
The Hill of Tara in Ireland is best known for Lia Fale, which stands tall at its very top and is best known by its nickname, the Stone of Destiny. That's not the only nickname the ancient stone has. It's also called the Screaming Stone and the Coronation Stone. The Screaming nickname comes from an Irish myth that when the stone is touched by the hand of the rightful King of Ireland, it will scream out to acknowledge him. Other Irish legends say that a mythical race called the Tuatha Dé Danann brought the stone to Ireland with them. This tale is told in a collection of Irish poems called Le Borg Abala Eren, written by an unknown author. Those same poems say that Cuchulain, a figure from Irish folklore, was so enraged that the stone didn't cry out for him when he touched it that he cleaved it in two with his sword and made sure it would never cry out for anybody else. The stone we see today is, therefore, half the size it used to be. The most likely version of the truth behind the myth is that the stone was placed here by people in the Neolithic era for ritual purposes. But the more colorful stories are a lot more fun. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!